Yeah, it's me. It's your favorite paint and sip chick. Yes, I'm back. Name is Vanessa coming to you with part two, second tutorial. Oh my God, I'm doing it. Yes, I'm doing it. Yes, I'm doing it. Second tutorial. I got so many responses and likes from you guys. I was like, I might as well do this again. Besides, it's really fun. A little bit about me. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I talked a lot about me in my first video. Paint and sip artist, customer service chick, put the two together. Uh, worked in the paint and sip industry for over four years um, and now I'm here on YouTube teaching y'all painting classes. You're welcome. That's enough of that. Let's talk about what we're painting today. Um, what is this? Well, it's tulips, but it's got kind of like paisley in the stems. Ooh, another one of my creations. You're welcome. Um, so this is what we're painting today and let's go ahead and talk about what we need. What do we need to paint this painting? So big difference from before. This one's really light. Lots and lots and lots of light colors. I was kind of, I just wanted to do something completely opposite than before. It was kind of dark. There was a glare. I was like, ooh, that's not fun. Even though it's a great painting because I made it in any way. I'm not perfect. I'm just fabulous. Moving on. Enter brushes. Same four brushes as before. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they work. They do what they're supposed to do. So big mama background, little mama, details, baby brush, little itty bitty details, pseudo mama brush, still don't have a name for this. Y'all leave some comments. Y'all didn't leave no comments in the first video. What should I name this brush? She's going to be doing the petals and whatnot, believe it or not, for this painting. So um, brushes do not like to be dry when they're painting. Otherwise, uh, they turn into useless bricks, like I mentioned before. So we need water there you go so we're going to take all our brushes drop them into your water cup put them in the pool i don't know whatever you want to do whatever your ritual is going to be there you go wet brushes happy painting all right and when the brushes come out of the water cup and they're dripping you want to go ahead and cease and desist all dripping so you're going to need paper towel make sure you, you don't need a whole roll of paper towel i hope you're not that messy if you are your life do you but just a couple sheets will be fine obviously you're going to need an empty canvas this actually is one of the paintings from my first tutorial but why is it all covered up <gasps> you mean you put all that work into that painting and then you covered it up yes i did it's called jessowing van gogh used to do it too with all of his paintings not to mention like the majority of all artists known to man in artist history so yeah it's a good way to save canvases good way to save money that's why we jessoed moving on and then you need paint because it's not really going to be a successful painting without paint. What are we using today? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of white. I can't hold it up all the way because this one's kind of drippy. Then um, we have some other colors. I found this really cool painting set. I'll show it a little bit later on in the program. Um, we have yellow. We have orange. We have dark green, we have light blue, and light green. And I would hold, there we go. Okay, now you can see it. Ta! -da! Those colors, that's what we're using for this painting. Why is there so much white and so little of the colors? Because the majority of this painting, believe it or not, is white. You will understand as we move along. So, um, now that we went over the tools of the trade, let's get to painting. <music> So now that we've done adjusting and all that magical stuff, um, magic of television, so on and so forth, we're going to go ahead and start. This background looks super, super difficult. It's really not. It's going to be Big Mama um, with an up and down stroke. Like you're painting a wall. I know I keep mentioning that. Hopefully by now you've painted a wall. If not, um, just get a piece of paper and paint up and down or just move your wrist up and down that's what you're doing the whole time when you're painting this and we're going to be using the double dipping method that's the method where you get two different colors on either side of the brush and you, you just go for it so um let's talk about how we do that big mama's going to work i call her big mama because i'm the one painting and it's my channel so you can name your brush whatever you want when you're painting have fun with that um, Big Mama's going to work first, like she usually does, because she's like, you know, the OG of the background. We're going to go in with white. And with the, the, the main painting, I did yellow majority. We're going to switch it up. We're actually going to go ahead and do blue. I just want to demonstrate that you don't have to have 
this painting look like that painting. In fact, hold on a second. I guarantee you that the painting that we finish by the end of this tutorial will look nothing like this one. And that's kind of something I'm demonstrating on purpose because I don't want you caught in that mindset of, oh my God, my painting doesn't look like hers. I'm a failure. Ah! That is such a lie. And I need you to go ahead and drop that off at the front door right now and never speak that over yourself again. Okay. Your painting is going to be fabulous because you made it and it's going to be its own work of art. So none of that, none of that, eh, God, my painting doesn't look like hers. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. No speaking that over yourself. I'm going to tell you this. Be kind to yourself while you're painting. Okay? All right. Let's do background. You, as I was saying, we're going to do white on one side. This is the double dippy thing. White on one side. And we're going to do blue on the other side. Yes, my paint mix. Oh my God, you guys who are just like, I don't want it touching. I need to breathe and move on with life, okay? In fact, I'm gonna get a little bit more white because we're doing the background. Please don't skip on the paint, okay? Um, we're gonna start from my right, your my right, your left, and go all the way to my left, your right, okay? All we're doing, we're gonna start painting downward and going up. Painting downward, going up and we're going to be moving all the way across this is this is why I really like this paint don't let me forget to show you guys what the paint is but the pigment is so awesome like that little itty bitty bit of paint look at the brightness of this color man it's ridiculous anyway being an artist um, when you have run out of paint I'm just gonna get white this time the idea with this background is picking up little itty bitty bits of color and lots of white. So, um, and also this is kind of a transitional thing. I don't want to get super confusing. The best way to describe it is you're going to be overlaying each color as you move across the canvas. And remember what I told you in the first video, if you haven't watched the first video, go ahead and watch it. So you know what I'm talking about. When you're overlaying colors, start where you left off so that you don't have any racetrack looking stripy, segmenty looking things that look like they're broken off and then put together like a bad puzzle. Anyway, so start where you left off. Now that we have come out of the blue, um, I'm not going to rinse my brush yet. We're going to go into yellow. Let's do, we're still getting white on the other side. If you do have a lot of color left on your brush, you can rinse it and just start with a fresh coat of white and whatever other color you want on the side. So I got white and yellow. We're gonna keep going across. The idea is that you're just gonna keep picking up color. I cheated. I didn't start where I left off, but I've been doing this for four years so I can make it work. Ha. You start where you left off. The idea is that this is gonna kind of blend and make a rainbow effect but nothing should be super, super bright because the tulips are the focal point and that's what you want to go ahead and shine. So if you feel like there's too much color going on, I really like color, but for this painting, um, what you can do, you can rinse your brush, okay? Rinsey, rinsey, rinse, remember, stirry, stirry, not stabby, stabby. Thanks, Danielle. Wipe it off on the paper towel. Just get some plain white while it's still wet. And you can run that through. See, look at that. Kind of mutes it out. Still super bright because this paint's really awesome. It's going to be soft so that when we put the tulips on top, they're going to be like, <laughs> okay, I'm done. So just keep moving across with your colors. I am going to pick up just a little bit of orange and then I'm going to let y'all rock this out. Remember you're going all the way to the other edge of your canvas. Um, mostly white. Pick up little bits of color on the way. Cool? So first part is done. We got this whole kind of 
how is it ombre yeah we're gonna we're gonna use ombre because it's fading into one color after the other that's still kind of in the ombre family okay but we got this cool rainbow thing going on so before um we go into the blow drying shtick and all that stuff yes we're gonna blow dry our canvas but again remember if you're just like eh, I want to take a break after the background. Background's always a good place to take a break, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and say that again before we go into the blow drying thing. But before we do, back to the original. So if you look closely, you'll see I have like other streaks of colors, like in with the yellow and in with the orange and the blue. And then I have more streaks of white on top. Can you tell I'm really excited for this painting? It was really fun to do. I hope you have fun with it too. Anyway, let's talk about how we do that. I have no idea why I'm so stoked for this painting, but I'm really excited to share it with you. Anyway, uh, let's talk about other streak colors in here. Oh my God, do I have paint on my face? <gasps> oh well, part of the character. See, look at that. Acrylic's fabulous. You can just scratch it off. All right, so other colors within your colors. Um, we're gonna use the edge of our brush. We talked about that in the first painting. I'm gonna start with the colors and then we're gonna go over with some streaks of white. I'll explain how that's gonna work in just a second. We're gonna start with blue. And I'm gonna take this, and you don't need a lot of blue. The pigment's pretty heavy duty with this blue. So you get too much, I just scraped my edges off to like kind of taper it, make it kind of fine. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go ahead and bring my brush down really quickly and bring it back up. And it's going to look kind of scary and kind of like what on earth is she thinking about? That's what it's going to look like and that's what it's supposed to look like. So real quick. Rinse your brush off if it's too, um, got too much paint on it. Okay, just to get that blue off. Doesn't have to be anything special. And you're gonna wipe it off on your paper towel mm -hmm. and get just a teeny, teeny bit of white. Anyway, and then you're gonna go back over. Ha ha ha, look at that! Isn't that cool? And if your paint's starting to dry, see where it's kind of dragging like this? See where it's kind of dragging like that? It just didn't blend all the way. Take your brush, just hit the top of the water with the tip of the brush, okay? You need to shake it off so you don't have any drippies and then just go over it. It's still damp enough where it'll spread. <laughs> so cool! Painting is so much fun. And there are some rules to painting, but once you get a hang of the basic rules, then you can start bending the rules and doing cool stuff like that. Um, luckily, you have me to guide you along the way so you can start bending them earlier. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, if you do ever are trying to do this and you do have any questions or concerns or anything, just leave a comment below. I'll get back to you. So moving on, we're going to do same thing in the orange. We're going to do some yellow. And then we're gonna do some yellow in the blue, okay? Ooh, another trick for you. So um, if it's if the paint's like drying, drying, because I got the light on and it's starting to dry this over here, you can take the tip of your brush with the paint on it and just skim that barely on the top of your water, no dunking it in or anything. Because then you'll have drippies and you'll be mad. But then you can go over, you can do the streaks and they'll go ahead and smooth out really nice. This is something where you want a little bit of paint at a time. You don't want to do a lot. So check this out. See? Look at that. You see that? That water just softened it up so that it can streak really nice. So we're going to go ahead and do that with the yellow over here now if you need to just get a little bit on the edge of your brush dip it into the water run it over if it's still too um heavy looking don't forget about it because we're still going to put some white streaks in here to soften everything up okay <music>
Nothing like this one. Completely, totally different. Although we still have to put the white streaks in, but still, it's gonna look different. So, one of the things I should probably explain, although it's kind of the same way as you're, you know, you're using the wide edge and you're painting up and down. When you're doing this stroke, it helps if you kind of flick like a check, like you're doing a check mark, okay? Um, for those of you who have watched Legally Blonde, yeah, I'm going there. Um, the part where she's like, bend and snap, bend and snap. That's what you're doing with your wrist, whether you're going up or whether you're going down, okay? Gentlemen, if you're watching my video, thank you very much. If you're doing this, think check mark, okay? You're bringing your wrist down, bringing the wrist up, all in the flick of the wrist, okay? So last thing before we blow dry, we're gonna do the white streak. So if you still have color paint on the edge of your brush, which I don't, go ahead and rinse it off. Um, and you're just gonna do the same thing with the white, get a little bit of white on your brush. You are gonna dip this into a teeny bit of water just to get it a little bit softer. Now these, you're gonna go ahead and start from the top and bring it down, okay? I'm not concerned about the bottom part as much because we're gonna have tulips coming up from here. But if you wanna bring some down here, it looks dope. I'll just do some down here and you'll see it looks cool. So, but really concern is coming from the top down. So I'm starting over here, my right, your left. I'm bringing the brush and flicking down. I'm bringing the brush and flicking down. The trick with this is not every flick should be the same length. I'm trusting you're not gonna do this. That's not going to work. It's making one static shape. We talked about shapes in the beginning when we were doing the um, geometric roses and we had to draw out the shape of the leaves or the roses for the tree. We draw out the shape first so that we know where we're putting things. For this, it's kind of the opposite. You don't want a shape with this. You have all these beautiful different length lines that are making this awesome canvas. You want to match that. You want it to be kind of out of control and a little bit so no same length flicks okay so you're doing the water down white from the left from the right to the left left to the right whatever direction you're going you'll figure it out you're smart So this is the point of the program where we're gonna blow dry it. Again, if you're just like, oh my God, that was such a workout. Ugh. And you just wanna go ahead and take a break, go ahead, leave it be, wash your brushes, walk away, just come back to it tomorrow. It's gonna be fine. And like I said, in the previous program, you can put me on pause. I'm cool with that, okay? So we're gonna blow dry this bad boy and then we're gonna talk about tulips. If you only knew how many times yeah, I think of you I'm quite sure that you will find yeah. I'm sure that you will find yeah. going up with mine about tulips it's probably the easiest one of the easiest flowers you'll ever paint um we got tulips we got stems we got grass and we have what paisley whoever thought about paisley why on earth is she thinking paisley the reason why i decided to go ahead and do paisley 
is because my beloved grandmother, God bless her soul, um, loved Paisley and I inherited that trait. So that's why I'm doing Paisley. If for some reason you don't want to do Paisley, you can put whatever kind of design or dot or freckle or heart or star or nothing at all in there because it's your painting and you have to live with it for the rest of your life or until you forget your auntie's birthday, which I hope you don't do. Moving on. So how are we gonna do tulips? We're gonna start with the stems. And this is where uh, Big Mama says goodnight. Goodnight, Big Mama. And we're gonna go for Little Mama. Y'all already know what to do. Make sure you wipe her off, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, so we're gonna start at the bottom of the canvas and we're gonna pull our way up. Kind of the same streaky thing, but not like whipping or check marking this time. There's going to be intent with these lines. So we are going to go in with our dark green. I have light green here. That's just because the paint set came with it. Um, you can use dark green and yellow and that'll work cool too if you need a lighter green. Um, speaking of which, <gasps> this is the art set I was talking about. This is Artez. Artez, this is a 24 color set. Look at all those colors that come with it. It was like 25 bucks, maybe 26. I think it was like 25.99. But you can get this on Amazon.com. I'll include the link below. Okay. Um, really great for beginners because look at all those colors. What? Yes. Anyway, so this is the set I was talking about. I used every color that I got from this painting came from this box. So really awesome investment if you want to go ahead and try this out. Huh. Back to our painting. I thought I got paint in my shirt. So we're going to do dark green and little mama just make sure you're getting the very end of her coated you don't want to go crazy and get like the whole brush loaded up so for this painting we have five main tulips one two three four five we will try to stay to the original shape of the stems however please don't beat yourself up if they don't look the same as this one okay like i said in the beginning this painting is not going to look like this painting and that's okay. All right, here we go. So we're going to start on um, my left, your right, and we're going to move all the way across. Okay, here we go. Um, so you're going to put your brush flush with the bottom. Y'all can't see that. Uno momento, por favor. Now you can see it. You're going to put your brush flush with the bottom right here. You don't really want to start your stem all the way up here. This is why. This is going to look like it's floating in space. And it's just, it, it doesn't, it defeats the purpose of the stem. Stem grows from the ground up. Doesn't grow from the middle of space up. That'd be really cool though. Anyway, so now that we went ahead and did our first stem, let's connect the two. And then I'll go ahead and talk about what we did to get that. My brush is a little bit more damp than usual. Still not drippy, but I didn't press as hard on the paper towel. Um, and I put a fair amount of paint on my brush. So when I pressed down, let's see, we got stem number two. Let's make this one a little bit shorter. We're gonna curve it the other way. Um, please take your time with this, okay? Especially if this is your first time, you're gonna be nervous. You're gonna be... I can see the shakes now. Please remember to breathe. <sighs> Breathing is important. Breathing is essential to life. Okay. And also if you feel like I need to hold my wrist, if it's that bad, you can hold your wrist for this. You don't need to go fast. Okay. Also at this point in time, you can put your your hand on the canvas because it should be dry. You just blow dry it or you came to, you're coming back to this from tomorrow. And you just want to push the brush down. And as you get to the point where you're like, okay, my stem's long enough, you're going to release pressure and let go. Okay, let's try that again. It's, the stem's going to need to leak. So we're going to come down here and we're going to go ahead and push down. And as we get to the point where we're like, oh, I like my stem, we're going to release and let go. Okay, I ran out of paint. Hold on. One more time. Okay, so with this one, 
We're gonna go back over our original line and we're gonna come off to the right and we're gonna release and let go. Look at that. Well, now you got like two, two lips on one, but that's okay. No biggie. And if you feel like, you know, the first time you went over it was a little bit grainy or you saw some of the canvas or you just weren't digging it, you can go over it again. Don't go too crazy though. You don't want it to look like some big mutant tulip, okay? Um, and I'm not there to fix it. The other option is, is that you can get a piece of chalk or a pencil, a light pencil, um, and you can draw this out first. In fact, I will demonstrate. Magic television, ain't that wonderful. So I got something called an HB pencil. You see that HB pencil? This is like the neutral pencil in the in the drawing world. And this is perfectly okay to draw on your canvas. You're gonna be covering it up with paint. The reason you don't wanna go um, with a heavier kind of pencil is because it can muddy the paint. It, this is dark paint anyway, so it's not gonna matter. But just, you know, rule of thumb, stick to the lighter pencils. Um, anything that's like H, 1H, 2H, or HB is cool. So for the third stem, that's our tallest one. And start from the bottom and you can just draw the shape that you want this is something awesome because it's a guideline it's like a safety net so at least you see where you're going I know you can't see that but if I move this up closer see that it's right there barely that's how light the pencil is you'll be able to see it when you're drawing so just keep that in mind next painting i promise i'll have chalk so you'll know what i'm talking about we're gonna do this really awesome tree i can't wait um so i will use chalk that time and you'll see what i'm talking about okay so we got two more stems to do we're gonna do this all together um holding hands virtually um and then i'm gonna leave you to do like the little stemmy stems leaves and stuff like that okay so two more all right i'm gonna come to the other side Hi, other side. So, um, not a fan of this position. We are gonna make it work. Actually, that's not bad. Maybe I'll shoot my next video on the other side. Mm. Anyway, let's do the stems. Um, so, press your brush down at the bottom, like the very bottom of the canvas, okay? And then you're gonna go ahead and pull up. I'm following the line that I drew, okay? You see where it's a little bit scratchy. So we're just gonna go back and get some more paint. Be right back. And the teeniest bit of water on top of said paint. And just go back over it. Okay. Don't worry too much about the tops, like even this over here, because we're actually going to paint the majority of the tulips over the top. So if they look a little bit janky, you're just like, oh, I don't know. Remember like the leaves thing? The leaves covered up like all the parts of the trunk you didn't like. The tulips are going to cover up the stuff that you don't like either. Ha <laughs> ha. So, two more. This one's the shorty, and he's going to kind of curve towards the middle tulip. Well, not that short. Okay. And the more you do this, the more fluid you'll be, and you'll have better control in your wrist. This is all about building up muscle in your wrist. When I first started painting, I had to hold my wrist all the time because my, my muscle control here was so weak. Um, and that's fine. That's to be expected when you start painting. I'm going to lift this up here so you can see the bottom. There we go. See? Um, that's totally okay. Please don't feel like a failure if you have to hold your wrist. I had to hold my wrist for like almost two years. Even when I started teaching in the painting of industry, I had to hold my wrist. <gasps> yeah, I did it. Whatever. It was fine. So <laughs> people had a good time anyway. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. Last one. All right. And then... This one's just a teeny bit taller, not by much though. We're going to curve him or her towards the bottom. Okay. Yay, your tulip stems! Aren't you cool? I'm so proud of you. So then we have grass, and the bottom of our tulip stems are a little bit wider kind of like the principle of the tree that we were doing in the geometric rose tree painting. Um, the bottom of the stem is going to be the widest. Same thing with that. As the stem gets further away from the ground, it's going to get skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Y'all remember that face? Yes. So same thing here. Same thing with the leaves. So let's talk about widening these out. Let's talk about the grass and let's talk about the little stemmy leaf thingies before we go ahead and before we before i go ahead and turn you loose and for that i'm gonna come back to the other side Die! i'm back i'm right-handed this works better for me um 
if you're left-handed, figure out what works best for you. So, um, grass, widening of the bottom of the stems, and leafy things. Let's talk about that. Still same brush, still same color. So it's the whole flicky thing we've been doing throughout this whole painting, so there's gonna be a little bit of a curve to it. So you're starting at the bottom and you are bending and snapping. You are bending and snapping. You are bending and snapping. And some of these are gonna be short. Some of these are gonna be long. I want you to think ornamental grass, not the grass that gets mowed with a mower and it gets a buzz cut. I want you to think beautiful flowing ornamental grass blowing in the breeze on a beautiful summer's day Ooh. okay i'm back sorry i had a moment um i do that uh so we're going to do that all the way across okay um and have fun with that and take your time on that um also if you're like i don't know what she's doing get a piece of paper get your brush Practice on your paper before you commit to your canvas, okay? Totally, totally, totally cool. If you need to take an hour break within each step, do it. Whatever's gonna get you through this painting and bring you some joy, do it. It's your world. So, grass all the way across, okay? And if you look at the finished one, you'll see they're all different lengths, okay? Even went and got artsy and had some floating grass. Yes, I said don't do your stems floating in space grass. And plus this background is like all kinds of whimsical piece of floating grass isn't going to hurt. Whatever you want to do. Let's talk about widening of the stems. We're going to do the middle one since that's the one that we can all see the best. Um, same kind of principle as the trunk. Um, and with the flare thing, the bottom of the stem is flaring. So you're going to come along the actual line first, but then you're going to start to flare it out and I kind of look to get a little bit slinky kind of curve it out that way see that looks nice right there you don't need to do anything else I was going to say you come on the other side and do the same but look at that that's fabulous so you may have to do both sides you may not that's the principle you're going to do with all five of the stems cool and then we need leaves or other little baby tulips whatever you want to do okay so we're going to come to the middle one middle one's getting all the love today so we're gonna do one stem coming out and then from the tip of this you're gonna come out and you're gonna do a little almond kind of shape you can do a curve on one side and the other I think for this one, because we're going to end up putting our tulip right here, I'm just going to leave it one. Let's do a leaf off of this one. So we've got a little leaf on here. We're going to do almond shape on one side, almond shape on the other. So like that. Okay. You need to draw that out. If you need to kind of just inch your line, like how we did with the horizon line in the first painting, if you need to inch your line and paint it out that way, or hold your wrist, whatever you gotta do, please make this comfortable for yourself, okay? If you don't wanna do leaves, you're just like, I ain't ready for all that, whatever. Don't do it, I'm not gonna twist your arm. So those are leaves. And then I have five tulips, but then I have one, two, three, four, five baby tulips. You can put those wherever you want. Same principle as the leaves. I'm gonna put a baby one right down here, okay? Um, this one over here is gonna have a baby one. I'm not gonna put one here because the stems are kind of close together. And then we will do, let's do one right here. There's enough space right here we can get a little one in there. I might add a couple more as we go, I don't know. And I'll put one right here. So, without further ado, we're gonna do grass all the way across the bottom. Then we're gonna widen out all five stems at the bottom. Then we're gonna go ahead and do leaves and any other additional BB stems for BB tulips, okay?
Here we go. All widened out on the bottom. Grass going all the way across your little baby leaves in there looking all fabulous. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a little bit of the light green, like this little pea sized drop. You don't even need that much. Okay, a little bit of the light green. And you're just gonna run it through a few spots. You gotta do everything. And if you need to get a little bit of water on your paint, and as you go, if it needs to, you know, glide, if it needs to, uh, if it's feeling a little bit sticky and it needs to glide a little bit more. And you're going to be putting like little designs over everything so you don't need to highlight everything. Okay. I just find it makes it look a little bit soft and bright. And it goes with the theme of the painting, soft and bright. So. I just really like the color. If you want to put some of this in the grass too, that's totally cool. In fact, I highly recommend it. All right, I'm excited because we're going to start doing tulips. Ha! Huh? But I actually have a couple of little bubbly spots of paint that I didn't smooth out right away. It happens. It's fine. Um, so I can show you what you want to do when you're painting over said bubbly spots so you don't get any smears in your bright colored paint. So um, we are going forth with Pseudo Mama is at the front of the show, which means I need a new name. So y'all say something down in the comments. Thank you. She is the one that's going to be doing the tulip. So we're going to take this down. Also, ha! forgot to do my edges. Don't forget to paint your edges. You can paint whatever color you want. It'll look fabulous. In fact, if you look here, I have orange on one side and I have blue on the other side. Who does that? Ha! Oh yeah, me. Back to the tulips. So main uh, contender is Orange, orange for the tulips. If you want to do blue, if you want to do yellow, go for it. I think orange kind of ties everything together and it really pops and looks great. Um, we're going to also use, be using yellow and white with our tulips, but first um, we're going to draw out our shape just like we did with the geometric tree. Um, and I'm getting a good amount of orange on my brush. If you want, you can just get it on the edge for this, but we're going to end up painting in the cups. Yes, I said cups. If you look at the tulip, it looks like a cup or the letter U, whatever you want to use. And that's exactly what we're going to be using to get our tulip set up. So we got five big ones, five BB ones that we're doing. Let's start with the middle one. And you are going to go, remember we're covering up the stem. So we're going to start with the letter U. Okay, just like that. Drag a line across the top. There is your tulip. Ta da! And then you're going to paint it in. Okay? Because you blow dried your painting, you're not going to have any smearing. Before I leave you to make the rest of your big tulips, let's talk about what happens when you have a little bubbly spot. How do you paint over that? Key word gently. Same thing that you did up here. So, and I'm coming down about a fifth of the way from the top. Okay? pretty long stem, you're coming down about a fifth, maybe um, a seventh of the way for the taller ones. Okay, you want to be up at the top, you want to take off that first, uh, that first segment completely. Okay, so I'm going to put my little paint down here to mark it. And I'm going to make my U. Okay. Also, if you're painting and you're struggling trying to make the shape on the canvas, take it out the easel lay it down flat. That's totally acceptable. When you first start painting, it's different painting with something going straight up and down. So if you need to lay this down, if you need to turn this around so that you can maneuver your shapes, there you can see me turning around now. Anyway, you can totally do that. That's not cheating. That is doing what's necessary to get this thing done. All right. So back to cut. Cup land, we are filling in our cup. So you will see, I'm still going over it. 
still filling it in. I'm just not schlacking the heck out of it. Okay, you're pulling down, you're gonna pull out the top of that bubbly spot and your tooth's gonna look really gross. It's gonna look like bleh. So just gently save you a whole world of pain. All right, with that, go ahead, make two at number three, four, four, and five. All the love we captured the day we met to a place where lovers go. Ta-da! Now we're gonna do the baby ones. For the baby ones, same color, switch to little mama. Okay, because they're not cup-like. They're more like little circles with little tips on the end. So I'm gonna come to the tip of my baby stem. I'm gonna make a little circle. And you can just leave it like that. I wanted to get a little bit flary, being an artist. And just curve the top around like that. Let's do that again. Let me see if I can bring this up closer. Where's another little one? Oh, I got a drippy. Hold on. And you guys saw what I did in Fasmo over here when I had the, the drippy leaf. If the watery part starts to dry, get your napkin a little bit wet and just gently dab it away. Where else do we want to put baby ones? We want to do one, let's do one right here. So, a little itty, itty one, we'll do a circle, and then we'll flip it up. We'll do one over here, circle. I just think it's cute. You don't have to do this. I think that little, um and let's do a couple more so what we'll have six five we'll still have five in total if you want to do more do your thing there is such a thing as too much of a good thing so i wouldn't do more than six maybe seven okay and last one Yeah. Ha. Next part is super fun. So now we add the texture and the dimension of these tulips. Okay. We're using pseudo mama. Hot mama. We're using hot mama. There we go. This just in. This brush's name is no longer pseudo mama. It's hot mama. We're going to do the double dip. Technically, it's going to be a triple dip. Yeah, we're going to work that out. Um, we got orange on one side and then we got yellow and white on the other so yes i just happen to have my yellow and my white mixed together so we're just it's all all three colors we're using in the tulip so we're just going to go ahead and get it all on the brush okay um and we're going to do this while it's still relatively wet so we're going to start in the middle i'm pulling up from the bottom you'll see right away this thing starts to blend and I cheated. We're starting from the top going down with these. Forgot. Sorry about that. Top going down. See what happens. Is that not cool? And these, they are going to be more the same length ish, but we're going to come back over it with just plain white and do some shorter ones. I still kind of kept them different lengths. You do want to keep it different lengths. It just gives more appeal to the eye and more texture. You do want that with these flowers. After I get my initial coat of yellow, orange, and white down, I'm going to come back just plain white. These should be different lengths, okay? That white should. It should be shorter. Okay, and also when you're going over a second time, it might look a little bit funky down here, right here where it's meeting where the stem is. If you need to turn your brush around the other way and then pull up, like what I did in the beginning, when I started to paint these tulips, pull up. So it looks like they're all coming out of the bottom of the stem. Okay, tulip number one, there we go. 
So you're gonna repeat that with all the other two loops. Let's go over one more together, okay? So first round, you got orange on one side. You got yellow and white, for the most part, on the other side. It's gonna look kinda gloppy. That's okay. This is something where you do want more paint, all right? We're gonna go for this one right here. So you're gonna start from the top, going down into the tulip. I'm starting over the cup line, that's going to go away, pulling down, pulling down. And see how I'm curving my brush along the bottom? That works really well with this brush. And again, if you need to take this down and lay it on a flat surface and do that, that's totally cool. Because nobody's watching you, so you can do whatever you want. If they look what I did, it's fabulous, and it will be. I just love how the colors totally mixed. You can see I'm taking some of the leaves out on the outside too. Look at what happened, it's so cool! And then get a little bit extra white and you're gonna go, you want these leaves to look sh shorter because it helps it look like the tulip is actually opening. So when you're doing the white, you do want those leaves to look shorter. And if you need to, if it's looking a little bit funky at the bottom, turn the brush upside down and then pull up from the stem. Okay, so now you're gonna do that with the rest of the tulip cups and things that lovers do, no stress, no a sweet caress from me to you. I wanna do the things we used to do, say the things we used to say, just let every day all day far away from me. Just jump in a taxi cab, pack a bag and get away fast Far away from here, far away from here, far away from here Just jump in a taxi cab, pack a bag and get away fast Y'all inspired me to do this because it was so much fun with the first video. I had to do something fun for the second video. So we're going to do the same thing with the BBs, but we're going to switch back to Little Mama. And go! Just jump in a taxi cab, pack a bag and get away fast. Far away from here, far away from here, far away from here. Just jump in a taxi cab, pack a bag and get away fast. What are we missing? We are missing the little designy paisley thingy. So really, I'm not going to say you have to do it exactly like this. Um, paisley, all it is is a curvy teardrop. Um, I'm doing everything with white paint. You can do it in the stem. You can do it in the leaves. You want to do it in the grass. If you are type A, OCD like that, and you've got that patience, do you. Um, I don't. <laughs> so. Um, we're not doing that today, um, but let's get baby brush and see what we can get into. All right, baby brush, just white paint. For this, because we got so much color going on, you don't really want to do any other color. So Paisley, I'm gonna come a little bit closer. Be right back. I'm probably gonna go out of the shot for this, but if you're doing Paisley, all you're doing, and if you want to draw this out first, that's totally okay. You're doing paisley and notice i am doing short strokes here layering short strokes on top of each other and this is probably not the best spot to do paisley but if you bring it back around you'll get kind of this teardroppy looking thing i'm gonna put some little lines underneath here this is a better spot because this is wider okay i'm gonna bring it up here we're gonna do the stem so if i start up top right here and then I'm going to bring it down, like almost like I'm making a backwards L or like a banana shape. I'm going to come around and I'm going to curve it like that. So I'm making like a J shape. And then I'm going to come back to the top and connect the two together. There's the Paisley. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing here. Again, if you're like, my Paisley skills are not on point or you're like, what is Paisley? 
well, you can Google that, but still, if you're like, I'm not really feeling that, just go ahead, put some little lines like that, or some dots. You can just do some simple highlights, whatever you want to do, but the pop, the pop is in the stems. Okay, so you gotta do something with the white. I really do recommend it. So um, paisley, dots, whatever. You're gonna do that just with the stems, maybe in the leaves, and do your thing. tulips done by me but really inspired by you so i hope you enjoyed this one too and that marks the end of another video i hope you had a good time um again like share subscribe please hit that bell so that you can be notified the next time i come out with another video which will be really really soon um love you guys you guys are awesome questions comments leave them below and Thanks for your support. Have a good night. I pray heaven is your reward.